Something really big just happened to something really big in the hills over Hollywood. Luke Burbank tells us all about it. No one thought things would turn out the way they did. It was just that back in 1923, real estate developers S.H. Woodruff and Tracy Schultz had a problem. So most people were living in downtown L.A., south of Wilshire, and they came up with this gimmick of how, how do we attract people from downtown L.A. into the Hollywood Hills to buy land. Sales for their new housing development nestled at the foot of the Santa Monica Mountains were sluggish. So businessman Jeff Zarenim says they had an idea. They came up with this gigantic sign that said Hollywood Land. It was only supposed to last about 18 months. That 18 months has stretched out to 100 years. A story only Hollywood could write, a temporary real estate ad that's become one of the most iconic images on planet Earth. Here we go. And it's still here, thanks to Zaranem and his fellow members of the Hollywood Sign Trust. Some people ask me, you know, how do you get this job? It's, it's not really a job. It's, it's, it's a volunteer position. There's, there's no pay in maintaining the Hollywood sign. I do this for the, for the love of Hollywood and for the sheer joy of doing it. Part of why the sign is so iconic? The sheer number of times it's shown up in movies and TV over the years. And a perfect spot for the starting line of the amazing race. The Hollywood sign has also drawn countless dreamers to Los Angeles over the years, looking for their moment in the spotlight, which is where Adam Burke comes in. Hollywood Land was really about putting LA on the map as being one of the creative capitals of the world. So it was really designed to become what it really has become, which is a global marquee for not just LA, but for the film and television industry. Burke runs the LA Tourism and Convention Board and thinks this might be the most valuable sign in the world. Last year alone, visitors to the broader LA area generated $34.5 billion of business sales to our local community. Some of which ends up in Chris Nye's pocket. I have a first aid kit and we'll deal with anything. There are no bathrooms on the hike. Nye is a tour guide who leads groups of excited tourists up to a spot near the sign on most days. He says those tourists are excited because seeing the sign is like seeing a celebrity. They need something, sort of a cliche to say, you know, live from Los Angeles or from Hollywood. So they keep taking the same picture of these nine stupid letters on the side of Mount Lee <laughs> over and over and over again. And, uh, and that's why it's become so iconic. Now, you say nine stupid letters, but you're leading tours up there, so you must think it's pretty cool. Well, what I enjoy is the enthusiasm that people have of seeing the sign for the first time and sharing that with people. Is this the only way down to the letters? This is it, man. We were enthusiastic as well, and thanks to Jeff Zaranim, our CBS crew was allowed to go so sidestep all right, right and, uh, down to the sign. I assume this is how Clark Gable used to do it. Yeah, I never saw him do it, though. <laughs> This is where it really sinks in to see how oh my goodness. large these letters are. Wow. Amazing. There you have it. From down below, you think that the, all the letters are in the same plane, uh -huh. but you can see that they're all offset from one another. In fact, it's that undulation determined by the hillside that allows the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce to trademark the sign. Otherwise, it would just be a word. You can really see from this angle that they're not in the same plane. They're yeah. all, you know, kind of facing in different directions. The first version of the sign was made of wood and sheet metal and covered in thousands of lights. But by 1944, high winds and weather had taken their toll. Some of the letters had fallen over. The H had fallen down. It said Hollywood land for a long time. By the late 1970s, the letters L-A-N-D were long gone, and the sign was in grave disrepair. So the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce went looking for $250,000 to replace it and got the money from some unlikely benefactors. 
first person who actually stepped up to the plate was Alice Cooper. The rock star. The, the rock star, uh, up and coming rock star. Alice Cooper is the first one to donate $27,777. As did Hugh Hefner, publisher of Playboy, Andy Williams, the singer, actor, and cowboy Gene Autry, and the guy who invented that car price guide, the Kelly Blue Book. This is the entire crew of the guys that worked on the Hollywood sign in 1978. So the, all of their names are welded into the I-beam of the O. Of course, this is Hollywood, home of the facelift. And the Hollywood sign has had its share over the years. Do you think it's going to be here 100 years from now? 100%. The audaciousness of the project, to me, is really still symbolic of the way LA approaches anything. We, we don't do things halfway. It's really go big or go home. As it turns 100, the Hollywood sign is, as they say around here, ready for its next close-up.